So a lot of short form creators are struggling right now when it comes to views. They're struggling in multiple ways, but views is what counts, especially on a platform like YouTube. And so I know why that is, but today I actually talked to one of the first food creators that really popped off in the short form world, specifically on TikTok uh, when it comes to cooking videos. His name is Matt Broussard. And one thing I really respect about him is not only um, did he become successful early in the short form game when it comes to food, but he's doing something different right now to create a solution for the problems that short form creators are experiencing and that's what's fascinating about this conversation because uh, not only is it ballsy what he's doing but it's not something that a lot of people even know how to do or want to do and he's actually doing it and i believe this is the secret to getting views in this next phase of not just short form content, but especially long form content on YouTube. Do you feel like this season that you're in, where you're now starting to do vlog style content, but you're doing it every day, is it similar to that, the early days of 2020, when you were just hustling and crushing it on TikTok before anybody else was really doing it? It's. It's similar, but also feels like I kind of know where it's gonna go, you know? That's, that's the difference. The reason I asked you is because the thing that I look at when I see your content yeah. is that you're doing something that the crowd isn't doing yet, like at a high level. Yeah. Like, honestly, I daily not, uploads, right? Daily uploads and also just the way I'm approaching the whole like cooking video thing, very different. And, and wouldn't you say in 2020, you know, pandemic, lockdowns. Everything's too polished right now. Yeah, but even back then though, right, it was a, uh, one of the things, and, and I guess maybe like for anybody that's listening, I know that you're a very humble person, but you know, we've got our creator events that we put on and it's amazing to me, even for me who has had my creator events and people fly to Seattle. But when I do this event with you, I mean, we're talking some of the most influential food creators come to town and there's something about you. I think you were like such a, uh, um, like a driving force because you were kind of early to the game. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's the case? Yeah. Like one of the early food creators that blew up on TikTok in 2020. Well, that's cause I already knew what to do. Cause like I was doing, I was doing this shit on like Insta since like 2015. I was like the first probably cooking person on Insta to use like an actual camera and turn it sideways and post it on Insta stories and Snapchat. So like when the whole like TikTok thing came around with the vertical, I already knew what to do. So it was just like easy just to keep going. And that's what probably helped me blow up. And then I was having to teach people how to do that stuff too, like how to you know, use a real camera. And totally. And I remember those early days of Clubhouse when you and Clubhouse, I connected, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, everybody wanted to learn. I mean, yeah. I mean you would jump on and I remember what would happen is people are there to listen to me, but then when you would come up to usually ask a question or be part of the discussion, right? Because, you know, that's the beauty of Clubhouse. It wasn't just me teaching. It was like we we're learning from each other. Everybody would want to listen to what you had to say. And I would, I would give you a lot of credit. There's a lot of TikTokers, a lot of short form creators that blew up because they learned from you in those early days. Remember, that's why I interviewed you. I was like, dude, there's something different about this guy. And, and I guess the reason I bring up all that, right? Post, you know, 5 million followers on TikTok, a million plus followers on YouTube, literally billions of views is now that everyone learned how to do it, both from you and just like, you know, being a creator, but also there's just so many creators that are just doing it in general across the board. Yes. You almost have this instinct, and correct me if I'm wrong, you have this instinct that I have to do something different, one, because you want to, but two, because if I just do what everyone else is doing, I'm just part of the crowd again. I forget that this is on me, and I was actually looking at it yesterday and thinking what you're saying, like this fucking tattoo that yeah. just says to like forge my own path. I was looking at that yesterday, I was like, that's kind of what I'm doing right now with the, 
the way I'm differentiating the, the long form cooking videos. Wouldn't you say that's so important for the creative world? Because if you think about just like fashion in general, it's usually kind of like the crazy fashion, um, a stylist type of people, or, or like even in the cooking world, which you can probably relate to, it's always like the eccentric chef that's willing to do something a little bit against the norm that ends up creating the new dish that becomes the norm one and day. And then when it becomes the norm, it just gets annoying. Like, oh, there's fucking fried Brussels sprouts everywhere now. <laughs> exactly. It just it's, becomes annoying. It's funny, you cooked me those fried Brussels sprouts yeah. and they were delicious, right? Yeah. But um, somebody had to do it first. Yes. Yeah. Right? Before anybody thought it was cool or it was going to work. Well, the thing is also everything's been done. You're just like kind of bringing it to your niche, right? And that's what's cool about where you and I are at right now. Because look, I've been a creator since 2008, right? Like in, in a few years, it'll go on two decades, which that's nuts because that's literally like half my life. Um, you're a younger creator, started definitely a lot later than me, but we're like converging on this path that I don't think is by accident. And, and it's not just because we're friends and we talk about this stuff. It's because both of our instincts, being different types of creators, are seeing the same thing, which is not only do you want to do something different, you also want to create something that you want to create, but ultimately, you and I both agree on this. The Mr. Beastification of content has actually ruined the creativity in a way because it focused more on optimization, production, and literally the metric of can I get view, click through rates, views, audience retention? And now it's like people want just whatever well, they want to watch. Yeah, dude. I mean, that's uh, even Mr. Beast is changing his stuff. Like he hired, you know Dan Mace is? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, Dan Mace, he's coming back. Dan Mace is a really good videographer, editor, all the things. We used to work with Casey, Casey Neistat. Yep. Well, you know, he, he posted a video probably four months ago I saw that he got flown out by Mr. Beast. Anyways, Mr. Beast hired him. Yes. And ever since then, if you've noticed, Mr. Beast has been slowing his stuff down, different oh. pace, more storytelling because of Dan. I didn't know That's that. That's why he hired Dan, because he's like probably thinking ahead, like I want to change the pace, do more storytelling. And that's why the YouTubers like, uh, oh, fuck, what's the, what's the bodybuilding guy? Oh, uh, Sam Solik. And um, the Trahan kid, I think his name's Trahan, the yes. little blonde kid oh, that yeah. did the Penny yep. a Day. Yep, yep. Like, that's why like all those guys are, are doing good Switch with their audience, up. because they're more connecting. And I saw, I've seen Dan Mace now pop up, people want to interview him about this exact same thing, uh, because he made this realization, I guess maybe you've seen more content, but from my perspective, he's also seen the same thing too. It's like, hey, people, number one, want more storytelling, but I think more importantly, they just want content where you connect with the creator because it's more relatable. Well, I'll tell you why, uh, my little theory, because I've always liked Dan Mace and like slower storytelling content. And I'm sure like you have too, and like other people our age. I think it's because the generation that was already on TikTok and shit, they're growing up. So the content needs to grow up. So that's what I think is happening right now. It's not Isn't that kind of so like, crazy? Even like from when you blew up on TikTok the first time, it's already been almost five years now. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> like they literally, they are growing up. Yeah. And I'm just getting older over here. It's crazy. Yes, I mean, that's probably what it is, is they're growing up and that's why that content's in demand. I was joking with uh, Andrew, who I just talked to before this. Remember when TikTok first started, it was all about doing a dance? Yeah. Right? Like, Musically. And now, is that even a thing? Do people still dance? Is it as, like, prominent? I don't really scroll on TikTok, honestly. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I would assume no, because that was even taking over Instagram at the point. Oh, the, uh, the dance. Because they were reposting. Yeah, oh, for sure. I don't think people do that anymore, huh? I do have a question on this, like, um, this feeling you have, not only because you know where it's going, but what is, what is your thought about this longer form content? I, obviously, like me, you're doing like vlog style content, but you say you already know what's going to happen. 
tell us both what is happening and what you think is going to happen and what's that what's that timeline I think like if I keep up at this rate doing it like five days a week it's guaranteed to, to hit in a year or less. and why why would it be guaranteed what's happening either with the content or the viewers or even with you it's starting to get like a snowball effect of the audience like engaging with it so it's just kind of growing like that and even my uh I don't know what you call him, but the guy I have at the Ostra Media that I talk to every day, um, he's even saying the same thing. Like, he's seeing what I'm doing, and he's just like, he's like, dude, this is guaranteed to pop. Because he works with so many creators, and they don't even, he's saying, like, the level that I'm doing, like, the editing and everything, is already beyond the creators that he's seen and worked with. And I'm just doing it like almost every day, which is I know. even and, crazier, he said. And some of, <laughs> some of these people, it takes them a week just to do one. Yeah. And then what sucks is because views are going down for almost all creators yeah. in general. In fact, uh, a good friend of mine said one of the reasons it's going down is because of TikTok and shorts. Yeah. But this is why, like TikTok, I think this is the one thing you learn and understand inherently you almost have to show up every day yes. just to compete, right? Uh, just to like be present. But secondly, what happens when you show up every day? I always tell you, just like a cook, when you cook a steak every day, you get pretty More damn reps. good at it. More reps. Exactly. So as a creator, you're just getting better. I can see this when I see your content. See, the one thing I remember when you first started and like you had a video that get like 300 views and this is coming from someone that's used to getting 300,000 views. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is really the moment because most creators would just straight up stop. They like quit, right? Yeah. But you didn't quit. I was like, okay, cool. He's keep he's keeping on plugging away. Yeah. Yeah. Now you know you have you know how you say, oh, you already know what's gonna happen, yeah. dude. I'm the old fogey that's seen this happen like four or five times. <laughs> so that's why I'm really proud of what you're doing because you have not only stopped, you have grown. You your views are going up, and, and in fact, your content I would say for, as a fan of yours, it's getting better. Yeah, I'm starting to realize where I'm going with it as I'm doing it, too. I think that's part of the creative process. You don't know what the destination will be, even though you kind of know how like this will play out. Dude, but I was talking to my guy yesterday. He's like saying, dude, we have a whole flow going. He's like, you're going to do your, your just the tip videos once a week. You're doing your regular recipe format videos like you're doing with the whole like steak and the fries. And then he's like, you also have to do your food reviews because I'm doing food reviews now too on my Discord. And then like just my shopping with me grocery runs. That's already a lot for my weekly flow. So it's like starting to get some sort of lineup going now. Um, well, and would you say that was a result of putting up the reps and just and find, trying things yeah trying new things yeah. which so many creators are afraid to do because it might not work or it would fail yeah but that's actually the number one thing you should avoid which is not trying because you'll never know what the next thing is going to be all the people that are like blowing up on long form food videos are just it's just not over the top i just think it's dumb like I made a giant sushi roll. Yeah. Guinness World Record. Like, just, you know, like, I don't want to do that. And that, to me, that's not even cooking. It's just, like, yeah, Mr. Beastifying just, shit, just like you said. So, I guess, yeah, it is. It is and it only works for how long it works. Yeah. Once a trend's done, it's done. This is a, the, the big takeaway from talking to my homie, Andrew. He said, when you tell stories when you make more relatable content when you and i are doing the reps right and you show up in people's lives every single day you become the element that people want to watch not just the content itself or or you know like your niche or your special way of doing it but literally you like you're building a relationship which leads to trust mm. which leads to like literally any good opportunity as a creator because that's what makes somebody go from a viewer to a subscriber to a fan. Yeah, that's solid points. Did you get that, Austin? I did get that. <laughs> uh, solid point. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I just, like, I, uh, 
I just want to get, because this is the thing, Matt. I'm telling you, it's not easy to completely switch it up. In fact, you've kind of, it's funny because like sometimes you feel like, oh, you know, even like I'm sure Victoria always says, hey, you need to just stick with one thing, right? Yeah. Like you got you to gotta have a strategy and just stick to it. Yeah. But then you're willing to switch it up, not because you're worried necessarily about the views. I mean, I'm sure like you consider it, but because you're like, it just doesn't feel right. Yeah. And to follow the feeling is scary and most people don't do it. But ultimately, like you said, the way it plays out is the feeling influences the content and then the content will literally like lead to whatever the solution is or the strategy that actually works yes. versus most people like I'm going to do the same thing over and over because I know it works. Yeah, there's more competition. I'm getting less views. I'm just going to grind it all the way to the bottom. But you know what? One day it'll come back. One day like it'll, it'll work. And they, they literally burn themselves out trying to get back to this nostalgic era that's not going to be around anymore. Yeah. You gotta go where the eyeballs are. Go where the eyeballs are. Um, yeah. Do you do you find any correlation to cooking and coming up with recipes when it comes to coming up with video ideas and like understanding what what strategy is gonna work? So like what? for you personally, do you ever be like? And then maybe you don't make the correlation consciously, but subconsciously because you had to work in the restaurant industry for so long. As in like, do I see a connection between making a recipe and a video? Kind of your instincts and your habits and that you, that, did you learn that from cooking? Like what made you kind of have the instinct to know when you follow your feeling, when you stick to something and when something's gonna be a thing? It's kind of the same thing I got with music and the same thing I got from kitchens. So explain. So just like Charlie Parker would say, he's a famous saxophone player, he'd say you got to learn the rules and then you break them. And that's not probably exact quote, but like that's the gist of it. Yeah. You learn the rules and then you break them. That's why, you know, I, I, I think I learned from like some of the best chefs that could just like come up with a dish on the spot and that's what I always like strive to do and that's what I do I could just if I can come up with something on the spot just make sure it tastes good it doesn't suck and that's it same thing with like a piece of content you have all these different tools which are like maybe the different styles that you could shoot with well I don't think a lot of people have different styles like, they might just be following things but mm -hmm. for me like I have a lot of different styles of using a fucking camera and editing because I've tried so many things. So that's why I can just mix shit up and just come up with something on the spot, if that makes sense. Yeah, the, well, like to learn the rules, you have to put it in the reps. And it's just like in Taekwondo, you know? Like to learn the foundation, you have to punch and kick like really thousands, yes. tens of thousands of times. And then what's interesting about breaking the rules, actually it's the same way in martial arts. When you go to a tournament, right? You actually know the same rules the other guy does. It's how how you do something different that he doesn't recognize. This is why we do so many repetitions in martial arts. So you can recognize when a certain kick, a certain combo yeah. is gonna come up to you. But then the guy that knows how to almost like use it against you is the one that wins because like what you said, he's almost like breaking the rules. Yeah. Like this is why uh, Bruce Lee was so groundbreaking for martial arts because he knew that the rules are what made you stagnant as a martial artist. And what does he say? Flow like water, right? Like yeah. you have to be you have form to be water. Yeah, you have to be water and whatever. I mean, we've talked about this, right? Like when we're talking about Bruce Lee. Because yeah. side note, he's from Seattle and we're talking yeah. it's downtown <laughs> Seattle right now. We literally just got to Seattle. Um, but uh, it's interesting what you just said. Like I've never heard of somebody say you learn the rules and then break the rules. You were talking about music, but dude, it's the same thing on YouTube and any platform because the rules are made because it worked and that's what works or worked in the past. But to know the new rule, gotta break some old ones. Exactly.
do something different. 